Hey friends, Elizabeth here from Plant-Based Bride, back again with Plant Miss Day 11, and today I'm going to be going through my year-end reading stats. This is the video for you if you're a book lover, if you are a chart and graph lover, if you love stats like me, you'll enjoy this video. I'll also be sharing how you can enter to win the final Plant Miss giveaway at the end of this video, so make sure to watch all the way to the end. If you're curious about my favorite book of 2021, check out yesterday's video where I go through the process of my book bracket spread in my reading journal to determine my favorite book of the year. It was lots of fun, so definitely check that one out. We have a lot of stats to get through, so without further ado, let's hop right into them. My goal for 2021 was to read 125 books, and I hit that a couple days ago. I read 39,074 pages. The average book length was 302 pages. The longest book I read was To Sleep in a Sea of Stars, coming in at 878 pages. And the shortest book I read was Anti-Racist Baby, which was only 24 pages. I had two DNFs this year. I thought it would be fun to do some comparisons between this year's stats and last year's stats, since last year was the first time that I tracked any stats at all to do with reading. I don't have any data moving further back than that, but I thought it would be fun to compare the stats that I do have from last year. I didn't track nearly as many data points last year, so there are some things that I can't compare, but for those that I do, I thought that this would be extra fun. So comparing 2020 to 2021, I read the exact same number of books last year and this year, Although last year I read more pages. The average book length last year was 27 pages longer than this year. Although the longest book I read last year was only 640 pages, but the shortest book was quite a bit longer at 76 pages. I also DNF'd twice as many books last year. Moving on to the age demographic of the books I read this year. Unsurprisingly, the majority of the books I read were adult books, 71.2% of my reads. Young adult books were 25.6% percent of the books I read, and middle grade came in at 3.2 percent. Comparing last year and this year here is interesting. The ratios are pretty similar, but I did read a little bit more middle grade and young adult this year. Moving on to genre, this is always one of my most favorite data points to look at. I always find it interesting to see which genres I read more than others because I feel like I have an impression of what kinds of books I read most, but that doesn't always align with reality. <laughs> so looking at the books that I read in 2021, the majority of the books I read were fantasy. A little surprising, as I've mentioned before, I'm a big sci-fi fan and I always think of myself as a sci-fi first reader, but I'm pretty sure for two years in a row now I've read more fantasy than sci-fi. Now part of that could be just books that I pick up that are labeled as sci-fi or marketed as sci-fi, which I interpret as fantasy, so that's how I classify them, but I also feel like there's just a lot more fantasy, whether it's light fantasy or high fantasy or anywhere in between. There's so much more of that, I think, being published regularly than sci-fi. I feel like it's a much more popular genre. Maybe that's just my impression, but I always feel like there's more coming out in the fantasy genre than sci-fi that I can get excited about. Next up, sci-fi and horror are tied for second place, which is kind of shocking. I read even more horror this year than last year, and as I explained in last year's video, I never thought I would be a horror fan because I am the biggest scaredy cat on the planet <laughs> and in the last two years I have started reading a lot more horror and actually enjoyed it, which shocks no one else more than it shocks me. Sci-fi tying for second place is not a surprise though, again, because I am a huge sci-fi nerd. Tied for third place we have nonfiction and romance, which is pretty shocking to me. Nonfiction is usually in the top couple. I do tend to read quite a bit of nonfiction, but romance, this is a big shock because I never used to read really any romance at all. But I did set myself a challenge at the end of 2020 to take 2021 to try to figure out what kind of romance I actually enjoy. And I definitely tried <laughs> to peruse a lot of different types of romance novels this year to try to figure that out. Next up we have contemporary, not surprising, it's a pretty wide genre. Then we have thriller, mystery, poetry, classics, and historical fiction. Historical fiction is probably the genre I reach for the least other than romance typically, so I'm not really surprised by that. And poetry I find to be very hit and miss for me. I can read a poetry collection and adore it and give it five stars or read one and absolutely hate it and give it one star. I feel like there's 
not a huge amount of middle ground for me with poetry. So I tend to avoid it, I would say, most times, just because I feel like there's too much of a chance for me to really dislike the experience. I would love to read more classics in 2022, so we'll see if I can manage that. So I wanted to do another comparison between 2020 and 2021. I thought it'd be cool to kind of overlay the two graphs from last year and this year. So as you can see, fantasy is our top for both years combined. Sci-fi comes in second. Nonfiction comes in third when we consider 2020's numbers, then horror, then contemporary, then romance next. And you can really see on the romance bar how much of those romance reads were from this year versus last year. I read such a tiny number of romance books last year. Then we have thriller, mystery, historical fiction, which I read a lot more of last year than I did this year, classics, and poetry in last place. Moving on to the format I consumed these in, probably unsurprising for those of you who watch my wrap up videos regularly, but the majority of the books I read this year were in audiobook format. This is not new for me. I adore audiobooks and without them, I would not be able to read nearly as much as I do. So 68.5% of the books I read this year were in audiobook form, 19.7% were eBooks and 11.8% I read from a physical copy. Comparing last year to this year is kind of interesting. I read a much bigger percentage of audiobooks last year than this year. 83.2% of my reads last year were audiobooks, and I read quite a bit more via ebook and physical book than last year. Moving on to ratings, and this year my average rating was 3.9 stars, which I think is pretty good. I feel like I am typically pretty good at gauging what books I'm going to enjoy and which ones I don't, and 99% of the time I just don't even start a book that I think I won't like, even though I know some of you like it when I hate read and hate review books. I try not to do that too often. I feel like that's part of it. I typically avoid books that I'm pretty sure I'm going to dislike. But also I think I just had good luck this year. I read a lot of books that I thought would be at least okay that I ended up loving. So I think that definitely skews my ratings. And as you can see, this is a beautiful graph <laughs> where we have the least number of one stars, then we go to two star, three star, four star, and the most common rating I gave this year was five stars. I love that. That makes me happy. I'm sure some people will think that that means that I'm not critical enough when I'm rating or that I'm too easy on books. But for me, that just means that I read a lot of things I loved and that's really the goal for me. So I'm happy with that. Comparing last year to this year, you'll see it's pretty similar. Last year's average rating was four stars and this year's average rating was 3.9. So I got the tiniest bit more critical or I read the tiniest bit more books that I disliked than last year, but pretty standard. So I feel like that's a good indication that my rating system has not changed wildly from last year, and also that I'm typically reading books that I enjoy. Now, this is a new stat that I added this year, which took me a long time to calculate, but someone suggested this in a comment on last year's video, and I thought it would be so interesting. So I put the work in, <laughs> and we have average rating by genre. So looking at this graph, you can see my average rating for each genre that I read in this year, and I don't have this information for last year, so I don't have a comparison unfortunately. But anyways, I thought this was really cool. So we can see by a long shot, Thriller has the lowest average rating, which is kind of funny to me. It was like 2.5. Poetry is next, and then horror, and then nonfiction and romance are around the same place, sort of hovering below four. At four or just above four, we have fantasy, science fiction, and mystery. Contemporary is up at 4.5. And then classics and historical fiction are up at 4.75, approaching five stars. So that's really interesting. I didn't read nearly as many classics or historical fiction novels this year, but apparently the ones I read were hits because my average rating was almost five stars. Moving on to the LGBTQIA plus rep in the books that I'm reading. This year I improved this and I'm so happy about it. More than 50% of the books I read this year had LGBTQIA plus rep in some form. I just barely eked past 50% at 50.4%, but I'm still super happy about it. Comparing to last year, you can see I made a big improvement in this area. Last year, only 36% of the books I read had LGBTQIA plus rep, and this year, 50.4%. So a big change there, and I'm very happy. 
Next up, we're looking at the year that these books were published. As expected, the vast majority of the books I read this year were more recent releases, either 2021 or 2020 releases. And as we move back through time, we get fewer and fewer books. I was excited looking at this and seeing that I had a pretty good spread as far as the older books that I read. Books from the 90s, the 60s, the 50s, 30s, 20s, 1890s and 1810s. I'm missing the 80s, 70s and 40s in there, so maybe I can get those next year but I always find this interesting to look at. And I decided to compare this to last year as well out of curiosity. And we see a pretty similar shape to the graph here. Moving on to how I got the books I read, this is a new stat that I started tracking this year, so I can't compare to last year. But throughout the year, I tracked where I was getting these books from. So the majority of the books I read this year came from my library through the Libby app, both audiobooks and eBooks. 23.2% of the books I read came from Scribd. 20% I own in physical form. 11.2% were provided to me as ARCs or advanced reader copies. 9.6% were from Libro FM, which is an awesome service where you can support small businesses, small bookshops while getting audiobooks through their app. There's a link in the description box down below. They're awesome. And 2.4% were from the Kindle app. Next up, looking at the author's gender, I try to focus on reading women's voices as well as voices of those who are non-binary or gender fluid. And this year I succeeded. 77% of the authors I read from were women, 19.8% were men, 2.4% were multiple authors, and 0.8% were non-binary. Comparing to last year, you can see I read from even more women and a much smaller percentage of men. I did read fewer books written by non-binary and gender fluid authors, though I will say the multiple authors for anthologies, one of them in particular was written exclusively by Indigenous authors some of whom identify as non-binary. So that would sort of add to that, but I definitely didn't do as well reading from non-binary and gender fluid authors this year. So I'm going to try to refocus on that in 2022. Moving on to the author's racial identity. This is something that's very important to me to try to make sure that I'm reading diverse voices. And this year I was able to break down this stat in a much more detailed way than last year. So this year I read from 47.1% white authors. I'm really glad that this number is under 50%, though I do wish it was even smaller. I'm going to keep working on that. The next largest piece of the pie goes to East Asian authors with 20.7%. Next up is Black authors with 17.9%. And then we have Indigenous and Southeast Asian authors tied with 4.3%, Southwest Asian authors at 3.2%, Latino authors at 2.1%, and Afro-Latino authors at 0.8%. I decided to compare this to last year, even though last year I didn't have detailed stats. This is because I didn't even think to track stats until most of the way through the year, and I wasn't able to find all of this information. This year, because I looked them up one book at a time, I was able to take more time to find out the racial identity of the authors. So last year I just have BIPOC authors and white authors, but you can still see that I made quite an improvement here from 31.2% BIPOC authors to 52.9%. So that's a pretty big change that I'm very happy about. Moving on to the author's nationality. Most of the authors I read from were American, unfortunately. This is really hard to avoid. As an English reader, I feel like the American publishing industry really dominates English books. So unfortunately, hard to avoid, but I'm going to keep working on trying to reduce this number. Next up is British authors and then Canadian authors, which really should be higher because I'm Canadian. I did try though. <laughs> then we have Australian, Nigerian, Japanese, Vietnamese, Indian, German, Pakistani, Bangladeshi, Polish, Argentinian, Danish, Ecuadorian, Irish, and Chinese. I wanted to compare this to last year's stats, but it was almost illegible because there were so many countries. I read from a bunch of different countries last year and the graph became tiny, so I didn't do a comparison this time. Sorry. <laughs> Next up, looking at the languages I read in, I didn't even realize until I compiled this that I hadn't read any books in French this year, which is kind of sad. So hopefully next year I can read more in French. I have several French books on my TBR that are sitting on my shelves back here. So I need to do that. Hold me to it. 
<laughs> so this year I read 94.1% books that were written in English and 5.9% translated works. Comparing this to last year, I didn't read any French books, so that number is much smaller, but I did read quite a bit more translated work, which is nice, and that was definitely a goal. And that's it for my year-end reading stats. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed compiling all this information and making pretty graphs and charts. <laughs> if there are any more stats that you think I should be tracking, please let me know in the comments down below so that I can add them to my list before the new year starts. <laughs> Some of the stats I already know I want to add are tracking neurodiverse authors and disabled authors, as well as neurodiversity and disabled representation in the books that I'm reading. Before I go, I want to talk to you about our last giveaway for Plant Miss. As always, all of the rules to enter are in the description box, so check that out to make sure you follow all the rules. I hate picking someone and then having to disqualify them because they didn't follow the rules. For our final Plantness giveaway, one winner will be receiving this traveler size notebook that is so beautiful from Archer and Olive. Traveler size notebooks are so handy. I'm currently using one as a bit of a budgeting finances journal, and there's about a million different things you could use them for. This has Archer and Olive's famous 160 GSM dot grid white paper. Super useful and super cute. The winner will also receive two sticker packs from Archer and Olive to make planning a little faster and more beautiful. I love the colors of these stickers, but I personally don't use stickers of this type, so I would love to send them on to someone who will love them. Again, make sure to check out the description box for the rules to enter. This is our final Plantmas giveaway, but I do hope you'll join me tomorrow for Plantmas Day 12, our final Plantmas video. This year's Plantmas has been so much fun. A lot of work, as always, but so much fun. And it really brings me joy to see all of you enjoying it as well. As always, thank you so much to my patrons for your support. Y'all are the absolute best and I love you all so, so much. If you at home want to join the squad, feel free. There's a link in the card and in the description box down below. And with that, I'm going to get going. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you really soon tomorrow for Plantness Day 12. Bye friends.